Ladies and gentlemen, everyone should be taking off the, out their whiteboard. Let's begin. Look around. There's a whiteboard near you somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a test tomorrow. 25 questions, all multiple choice. You will be getting assigned essays for your three-day weekend. Yes, and they are due on? Monday when you return. We are officially in writing week and we will begin writing over the weekend. Unfortunately, that means we will not be able to plan our essays together. You will have three. I was gonna give four, so I thought three was nice. Okay, here we go. On your whiteboard, tell me what year does the Soviet Union collapse? Good, Brit. On your whiteboard, what year? On your whiteboard, tell me what year does the Russian Federation Constitution get signed? No. No. What is it, Alice? 1994. 1994. It starts getting ratified in 93, finishes in 94. So if you have 93, it's not too bad. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the last Soviet leader? What is the name of the last Soviet leader? What do we got? Jimmy? Gorbachev. 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 Then it goes to who? He will be. Goes Gorbachev. Then who? Ethan. Yeltsin. After Yeltsin, it goes to Brennan. Putin. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the two policies that Gorbachev is going to put into power? One of them is it called openness, which allows people to criticize. The Russian government, Alex Sabwe Inc. The second one is known for its economic reforms and opens Russia to more capitalistic policies. What do you got, Jack? Uh, Perestroika. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called in Russia when each state is not equal here in the United States. Florida is equal to the United States. However, in Russia, they have unequal stateships. What is it, Sophia? Asymmetrical, Asymmetrical federations. On your whiteboard, please tell me. <sighs> President Putin is going to put into power a group of eight leaders. What title do they have which will strip power from the super uh, from the federal council? Oopsie. Board. There you go. On your whiteboard. Some of you are getting rocked, by the way. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, what are the two positions on the executive branch in a semi presidential system? Do not erase your board. We're going to do a couple things here. Who are they, Desmond? Okay. Put a star next to the one that is elected by the Duma. Good. Who is it, Nick? Prime Minister. Put a star next to the one that is head of state. Who is it, Britt? Put a star next to the one that has more power. Good, Jimmy. On your whiteboard, put, nope, you can erase it. On your whiteboard, please tell me how many years in between presidential elections in Russia? What is it, Mr. Clark? Six years. On your whiteboard, please tell me, true or false, there is a deadline or a fixed term for prime ministers. True or false, there is a term limit. 
Why am I struggling? What do you got, Jake? False. False. They have no term limits. Okay. How many times does it take a vote of no confidence to get a prime minister out? Caesar? Two. Two. On your whiteboard, what president will be impeached three times? Good. Caitlin? Yeltsin. Who follows Yeltsin? Who will assume the power? Sydney? Putin. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of Putin's political party? Alex, stop wasting my ink. Annie, United Russia is his political party. On your whiteboard, who is the biggest political party threat to Putin? I have no idea what that is. Good, Sophia. A just Russia is the biggest political threat. There are two councils that Putin is responsible for creating. What are the two? That's one. Good. What do we got, Ian? There you go. We have the State Council and the Security Council. Who's in charge of the State Council? No. Who is it? Britt. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is both. Never mind. On your whiteboard, Russia has a parliamentary system, but that's not its full name. It's called a what? Good. Caitlin. There you go. It is also a bicameral body. Give me two houses and don't erase them. Some of you are getting completely and utterly rocked. Who is, what are they? Grant. Okay, put a star next to the one that is directly elected by the people. Which one, Nick? Duma. Put a star next to the one that has lost power under Putin. Jimmy. Thank you for that. Uh, put a star next to the one that is responsible for approving the budget, passing legislation, and confirming council. What do we got, Desmond? Duma. Duma. Put a star next to the one that has 450 members. The answer is what, Selena? Duma. Put a star next to the one that approves budget, treaties, judicial nominees, and troop deployments. What do you got? Jack. Federation. What branch of government is completely corrupt in Russia? Good. Which one? Sophia. Judicial. On your whiteboard, true or false, Russia has a constitution. What do we got, Brooklyn? True. true. What is guaranteed by the constitution but is not implemented by the people of Russia? Ooh, I'll take two answers. All right, give me one, Caesar. Rule of law, give me another one. Mr. Clark. Judicial review. I'll take both. Uh, please tell me what is the name of the two largest interest groups in Russia? Who are the two largest interest groups in Russia? Good. Annie. Perfect. What is the name of the N word that is used as the cultural foundation of Russian government that is based on the bureaucracy that you take care of people who take care of you? What do we got, Emerson? Sounds good to me. 
On your whiteboard, please tell me, true or false, Russia has a civil society. Caesar, false. Who can raise their hand and tell me why Russia does not have a civil society? Caitlin. There you go. The government can't regulate it, so it does not happen. On your whiteboard, there are two groups that control the media in Russia. What are the names of the two groups who control it? <coughs> Good. Who are they? Caesar. Um, state and, and who private technically private. are the private? Perfect. Oligarchs technically are the private. Perfect. Let's meet me at military. That's where we left off, isn't it? Oh, perfect. So we know that if you criticize Putin, you're probably going to die, yes? Yesterday, like literally yesterday, like February 14th, Russia put a 15-year-old girl in prison for 10 years for posting on Instagram about, about the war of Ukraine in a negative way. Yeah. Yesterday, they also put away a journalist for 20 years who wrote two columns about Putin's lack of um, military intelligence on the Ukrainian war. 20 years. That was yesterday. That's what the BBC is reporting today. Okay? So it's a big deal. Now, we're three days away from the one-year anniversary of Ukraine invasion by Putin in 2022. As of this morning, there are more Russian boys being pushed into Ukraine than ever before. Yesterday, in case you did not see, one of our highest generals, like the peak of our swords, said that Russia has already lost the war in Ukraine on the three fronts that matter. Strategy, ability, and um, products, like uh, munitions. That they've already lost the war on those three fronts. And Putin cannot win this war because he's already lost it on these fr three fronts. The reason why that is a concern is why. Why is that scary, Ethan? He's not conceding. He's not conceding. As you've already learned this week, has Putin done a hell of a job making himself the end-all, be-all of Russia? Yeah, we're talking of a country that has over 3,000 years of existence. Okay? And we've spent most of this week saying what name? Putin, who has made himself the center of the being of Russia. And he is getting his butt kicked in the most public way when he has never really lost anything. Do you think he's going to concede? That is the biggest threat to the United States and to the rest of the world. Because if he can't concede, what is the only option he has? Nuclear war. And that is the big concern now. Not because he could win. But because he can't win, will he push the button? And that is the big concerning point. So how did we get here? Well, let's talk about it. First thing you need to know, the USSRs. So let's talk historically to get to the present. The USSR was known for its military strength. The USSR was known for its military strength. The Russian Federation is not known for that. Write it down. So what has Putin been trying to do this whole time? Trying to show the strength of his military, but has that worked for him? No. You need to know that the Russian Federation military was considered number five. Why is it a was, Caesar? No. Why is it a was? Started going down pretty quickly a year ago, almost to the day. Nick, they're butt kicked by who? Ukraine. Does anyone think of Ukraine as a world power, ladies and gentlemen? No, but they're getting their butt kicked. There are two major reasons the Russians are apparently getting their butt kicked. I am not a military person. This is not my forte. The first reason is, is they're poorly supplied, which means they're running out of weapons, they're running out of food, they're running out of just supplies they need for war, so they're scavenging more than they're shooting which is not a good look for a military. Can we agree? Second major reason is, 
is they do not focus on next man up. The strength of the American military, apparently, news to me, is that we practice next man up. So if I'm the leader of this group and I get killed in Russia, none of you have been trained to do what I do. So what will happen? A successful quick transition or chaos? Chaos. That's what's happening in Russia. The leader gets killed of all the regiments and it's chaos. In the United States, apparently, we do next man up. So there are leaders below me that know exactly what to do when I get killed. That is the policy of the United States. So our leadership is directed consistently to the next line, not chaos, which is why we are successful. This chaos is the reason why Russia is in a ragamuffin state. Okay. Second major thing, every man has to serve in the Russian military. Write it down. You have a conscription of one year, which means you owe the state one year of military service. Does that mean you're on the front lines? No. It does mean that you need to go to military training. You could be used for intelligence. You could be used in the kitchens. You could be used on the front line. Every man has to serve. Okay, you need to know the Russian military has decreased because of the Ukrainian invasion. Okay, next one is social cleavages is your next heading. Okay, you were going to start on religious. You need to know that 80% of Russians are, East, are Russian Orthodox. It's a version of Eastern Orthodox. As we already know, Christianity is going to split into Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholicism. Yes, they're pretty similar, but they are unique. If you're a Roman Catholic, you got a baptism, and you got sprinkled or dipped into some water. You had some water dripped <coughs> on your head. In Eastern Orthodox, it's oil. So there's differences. There's nuances, not huge, stark differences. But there are differences between the two. 80% of Russia is, East, is Russian Orthodox. That means the remaining 20%, write down, are going to be other Christians of the 20, a majority of other types of Christians. But the largest sect is going to be atheists. Why is the largest sect of atheists located in Russia in 2023? Why? Why? Jimmy. There you go. You cannot be communist and have a religion. Communism promotes atheism. Write it down if you didn't know it. The USSR is communist. So because they are communists, they were atheists. And that is the traditional thing that most Russians grew up on is being atheists. What do you got? The two... 80% is going to be Eastern Orthodox. Of the 20, the majority is going to be atheists and other Christianity. Very few are going to be Muslim. Okay, ethnic. Here we go. You need to know that 80% are Russian. And when we say Russian, we're referring to mostly white people with blonde hair is kind of what we're talking about. We also have some Asian components in there. Why is 80% of Russian white people with blonde hair? Think about it, logically makes sense. Why, Sophia? Huh? Um, well, they don't really need to, I guess, because they're you know, the largest country in the world. Why? Where do most of these people live? In the snow. In the snow. <laughs> in the snow. No, Jimmy, they don't live in the snow. Ethan. <laughs> Because they're on the European side. The European side, which is this side, has the highest population density because that's where the largest city is. What is the largest city in Russia, Britain? Moscow. There you go. Does anyone know what number two is? What do you got? Four. St. Petersburg. They're all over here. Moscow is like located right here. St. Petersburg is located right along the Baltic Sea. Okay, those are the two largest cities. That's where most people, 75% of all people, are found in urban lo locations, which is why most of the population is going to be a bunch of white people, blonde hair. 
Now, it is important for you to know that there is a very small Muslim population, okay? And that is going to be important because of what set, what group of people, Sydney, are going to be punished by the Russians, specifically by Putin, in a revolt. Mm, what do you mean by that? Well, there's a lot of people who don't like him. There's only one group of Muslims who fight him. What do you got, Brooklyn? Chechnyans, which we're going to get to. So the Russian Chechnyan cleavage. Here we go. You need to know that the Chechnyans want independence because they are a tiny minority. Very few Muslims exist inside Russia. The Chechnyans want independence from Russia because of their Islamic heritage and the fact that they are mistreated by the Russians. Putin, as we've discussed, crushes it. He doesn't put it down, he crushes it. Why, Luke? No. Why does he crush the Chechen revolt and not just put it down? Emerson. To set an example to other minority groups who want their independence. So he crushes it, completely destroys, overly abuses these people. Now, modern day, write this down. You need to know that Chechnya is still part of Russia. So did it work? No. You need to know. They do have more independence now than they did. Brooklyn, write it down. You need to know they do have more independence now. For instance, they practice Sharia law. And what is Sharia law, Reagan? Mm. Iran uses. Okay, and it's based on what? Help her out. What is Sharia law based on, Alex? Muslims of faith. Islam. Islam. What specific part? Um, no. No, just because it's Sharia law does not. What is it based on even? It's based on the Quran, people. Yes, it's based on the Quran. The Quran is what it's based on. Okay, so you do need to know they're still part of Russia. They do have some independence. But it is important for you to know that Putin did rebuild the mosques. Write it down. AP wants you to know that. They do rebuild. He does rebuild some of the mosques that he blew up. That's about as close to an apology as you're going to get from Putin. What do you got? So, did he, like, rebuild stuff then? Or yeah. He did all the things he could possibly in 1999. Yeah. Yeah. Because he just, like... Yeah. Because he, he had to make an example out of them. So, if he was just, like, you know, just chucking, like, little hand grenades at things, it's not that impactful. Sure. I'm going to move on to demographics. Okay. Okay. I don't need you to write down that Russia has a population of 146 million because that doesn't mean anything to us. But you should know it's one of the, it's in the top 10 largest countries in the world. Okay? It's in the top 10. Actually, it could be number 11. But it's near the top of the largest countries in the world. With that being said, by space, it is the largest company, a uh, company, oh geez, country in the world. I don't need you to write that down. You probably should know that. You do need to know it's one of the coldest countries in the world, and its warm water ports, write this down, are incredibly valuable. It is one of the coldest countries in the world, and its warm water ports are its most valued. Brooklyn. Isn't that why Canada is so important? Exactly. That's why you need it. Okay, let's do a little geography. So, this is Russia, okay? It's huge. Now, imagine a circle that cuts off the top. Very few people live from the middle of Russia towards the top. Make a dipping U because the world's round, yes? Okay, it's a globe. So, 
Very few people live up there because it's so damn cold. You've seen pictures of Moscow. Moscow is like in the middle of Russia. How cold does that place look? So imagine being north of that. Not ideal. So Russia has a northern coast. This is completely <coughs> sealed off by ice a uh, majority of the year. Over six months a year, it's completely sealed off, and it's too much work to break up the ice. So it's just closed. Over here, it is landlocked, except into the Baltic Sea. Now, St. Petersburg is on the Baltic Sea, which is why it was built there as a trade port. The Baltic Sea is very cold and will freeze in the ports. They can break it up, but it's very annoying. If you look down here, there is a little bit of land that touched the warm waters. The warm waters I'm referring to are the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. These waters never freeze, so access to them occurs year round. So what are the two most important trading access points to the Russians? Caspian Sea and Black Sea. The reason why Putin wants Ukraine is because look at all of this access that he will get to the Black Sea. Now, Putin in 2014 took over Crimea. Crimea is located right here behind this R. It is a peninsula located in the Black Sea. If you control the peninsula, you control the Black Sea. So if he controls Crimea, he can stop countries from entering the which means he can dominate it economically and control what goods are being moved. That's why he took it in 2014. He can call the shots in this whole body of water. Warm water por ports is what Putin needs because all of this is sealed off. Half of this is sealed off, okay? And over here, yes, he does have access to Asia, but via China and Japan and all that stuff, but he doesn't do too much business over here, and it's so far away from the production centers, you'd have to put a train on the Trans-Siberian Railway to put on a boat. Doesn't make much economic sense. Warm water points are the major reason why Putin wants Ukraine. Also, you need to know that life expectancy is only 73 years. Why, uh, what do you got, Sophia? Yes, because the problem is, is that Putin wants all of the former territories of the USSR. He wants what are now called Ukraine, Belarus, which is kind of his, because they have a authoritarian regime in place, and Putin pretty much tells them what to do, and he's like, okay. Um, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, all of these are independent countries that used to belong to Pu uh, the USSR. Putin wants them all back. But that's probably not going to happen because how terrible is this going? Pretty poorly. And he's going to stay away from Poland because Poland, uh, Lithuania, and Latvia are all part of NATO. So he's staying to the south of all those NATO countries because if you trigger a bombing on a NATO country, it triggers a response from them. <laughs> All NATO countries. Okay, we talked about why the life expectancy is 73. Why? The United States is 83. Why do they get 10 years less than we do? Uh, Mr. Clark, why? Yeah! Stereotypical. But Russians like to drink? Vodka. They drink it all the time. I'm not saying like in school, like they're taking shots. So someone asked me that. Oh, they drink vodka sitting in school? That is not what I said. That is not what I said. Um, but they do drink w higher consumptions of alcohol. Uh, they're one of the biggest drinkers in the world. Okay, does anyone know who's number two? No, U.S. doesn't really drink that much in comparison to other countries. It's not as built into our culture. Now, do we have a drinking? Do we drink a lot of alcohol? Yes, we do, but we are not in the top five. No, China doesn't really drink that much. Canada? Okay, yeah, no. think about it logically. What other country do we have stereotypes about people drinking? Ireland, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the Irish? Yeah. 
Whiskey is their big thing. Russia is really into vodka. The culture in these countries are based around the alcohol, which is why they have less life expectancy significantly. Also in Russia, you need to know the alcoholism. You also need to know the GDP is incredibly low. It's only really good for a few people. And who are those few people? For the rest of the average citizens in Russia, life is very, very hard, especially of late. Okay. Economy. Here we go. <coughs> you need to know the economy in Russia is mixed. If it's mixed, it means what, Jacob? Okay, sort of, yeah. They have both private companies that own it, and they also have state-run. Write it down if you don't know that. They have a mixed economy, which means the government owns some things, while there are private individuals who own. And what do we call these private individuals who own most of it? Oligarchs. Oligarchs. Okay. You need to know that it is the fifth largest economy in the world but it is 11th in GDP. So is Russia really making that much money? With it being the fifth largest economy in the world and it being number 11 in GDP, it really doesn't make that much money. No, it does do fine. It's not doing great. What do you got? Economy is how many people are buying goods, selling goods, and interacting. So it's the fifth largest economy, mostly because it's a massive state with 146 million people in it. The second thing, GDP, is how productive are they and how active they are in the worldwide economy, and that's why they're number five, uh, 11. Think of all the sanctions on Russia, okay? Now, you do need to know that it is a rentier state, and what is a rentier state, Caitlin? <laughs> Help my girl out, Brennan. Yeah, from natural resources. Most of their GDP is coming from the selling their natural resources. Now, as you know, most of the countries we've studied so far are rentier states. It's not a great thing to be a rentier state because those natural resources will eventually get depleted or used up, and which makes them incredibly vulnerable. Like, they estimate that Saudi Arabia will be out of oil by the year, like, by the year 3,000, they're completely and utterly out, of course, so they'll be fine for some time here, um, but everything will be expired by the year 3,000, okay? So, with that being said, you're like, well, of course, who cares, it's the year 3,000, but if their economies don't advance, what's going to happen to those types of countries? Things aren't going to go so well. Okay. There are state-owned corporations. The most famous one is the gas called Gazprom. It is a state-owned company and the largest producer of natural gas. Put a box around it. It's a rentier state, which means Russia benefits from its natural resources. You need to know the two natural resources that Russia sells is natural gas. The second is oil. Does anyone know where they drill for oil? Yeah, they drill for oil in Siberia. So easy drilling or very hard? Very, very hard. Very time consuming. Very expensive. So they don't make a ton of profit off their oil. Now, are they still making oil money? Yes, but they make money off natural gas. They are the number one provider. Write it down to Europe for natural gas. Which is why when Putin invaded in 2022, a lot of countries didn't immediately stand up and condemn Putin and pull funding because they needed what? The natural gas. They just finished building a pipeline from Russia to Western Europe, specifically Germany, who is the largest purchaser of Russian gas. And... Um, right before Putin invaded. He waited until that pipeline was completed. The Germans turned it on, got dependent, and then he invaded because he never thought Germany would condone them since they're 100% dependent on them. 
Has Germany come to Russia's aid? Did it take a while for them to condone, though? Yeah, they finally did, and they just really started participating in the anti-Russia campaign, which has surprised Putin. All right, foreign policy is your next subheading. You need to know that Russia is a nuclear power, not a superpower. Russia is a nuclear power, not a superpower. A nuclear power means you have like a hundred nuclear weapons. There's actually a lot of nuclear powers. I don't know if that will make you sleep better or worse, but there's a lot of them. Does anyone want knows what makes a country a superpower? No. What do you got, Desmond? Like the no. What do you got? The economy and the okay. So to be a superpower, you have to have the economy and the influence, but you also have to have the technological pull. Things get made in America. Ideas are created in America, and they're stolen by other countries. Intellectual theft is the biggest problem that is happening to America, and that's why, like, the Pentagon. Our ideas are being stolen by China and then implemented by the Chinese specifically and the Russians. Okay? We are a superpower because we're on the forefront of technology. We are pushing forward to figure out what the next weapon is going to be, and that's what makes us a superpower. On top of the fact that we have plenty of nuclear weapons and we can fight on any front we need to. You need to know that Putin's biggest threat is NATO. Okay, As you know, in the Cold War... We have the Iron Curtain, which is buffer states and satellite states that divide the East from the West, or divide Russia from the West. Well, with NATO spreading eastward, write it down, with NATO spreading eastward, the Russians feel more pressure. Okay, you need to know that... The war in Ukraine. Ukraine gets its independence in 1991. Write it down. Putin will invade Crimea, which is right here, in 2014. And he needs it for access to what type of port? Warm water port. Okay. And then we know that he will not attack again until 2022. He will, he will then attack in 2022 to continue to expand his power and reconquer former Soviet states. You have to know that. That's what Putin N's goal was supposed to be, reconquering all of these former Soviet states. Because what president does he hate? Gorbachev, because he lost it. What do you got? Ukraine, 1991, 2014. All right. You need to know that they're a part of the UN, World Bank, World Trade, and International Monetary Fund. They're a part of all of those. I'm trying to see how much I have left, Jimmy. Since when are you passionate about notes, Jimmy? So they're a part of all of these, right, Alex? Okay. You do need to know, protesting Putin is one thing AP loves. You do need to know <coughs> that anyone who is anti-Putin typically ends up dead. And this is because AP wants you to know and not because of Samantha Bennett. There's a group called the Pussy Riot. I think I mentioned them to you. They are the number one loudest critics against Putin. They are supposed to be jailed for like 400 years in Russia for all these crimes that they've committed, which obviously are political sanctions on them. Um, and they are his biggest criticism. Here is Putin has pissed himself. Is one of their classic songs that has gotten them in lots of trouble. There are plenty of other songs that I can't even use the words in the title to tell you the names of them. They're like a heavy, heavy rock. If 
Like, I know that Pussy Riot comes on if you ask for Tool on Alexa, because my husband loves Tool. I hate Tool. But Pussy Riot does come on. If you listen to Tool, they're in the same type of genre. In case you are collecting anti-Putin music selections. There you go. That is it. You have a test tomorrow, and we start writing.